Today on Geeks Father, we're going to be talking about a topic which is a bit of a hot topic amongst drone flyers here in the UK. How to fly your drone around low-flying military aircraft. Can you do it? Should you do it? And how do you actually go about notifying the RAF of your intended drone flight? Does that even matter? Will that work? Today, in conjunction with the RAF, we're going to be answering all of those questions and more. Okay, so as explained, we're joined today by squadron leader Rebecca Rowlands. Uh, Rebecca, hi, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a really good opportunity to increase awareness and put some information out there about military low flying. So really pleased to be here. Could you just very briefly explain what your role is within the RAF? Well, I'm a helicopter pilot by background, but I'm currently working in uh, flight safety. And among other things, one of the areas that we're looking at is the risk of mid-air collision between a, a drone uh, and a military aircraft. Why does the military operate low-level flying in the UK? What, what, what kind of reasons could there be for that to, to actually happen? So low flying is a demanding skill which we need to train our pilots in and also we need to practice to remain good at it. So the pilots or, or the crew, if you're talking about a multi-crew um, aircraft, they will be managing complex aircraft systems, talking on the radios, navigation, maybe mission scenario. Uh, so a lot of the training that we conduct uh, in the UK will we'll put a mission scenario to it. So for example, simulated enemy troops, so that will influence your route selection, or maybe you're working against the clock, so you've got a time on target for maybe a troop or a pick up or a drop off. In, in addition to all that, uh, there's the safety aspect. So looking out for other aircraft, wires, uh, birds, drones, horse riders, uh, and ultimately um, not flying the aircraft into the ground. So we have our advanced trainer aircraft, we have fast jet, tactical transport aircraft like A400M Atlas uh, and helicopters all in that naught to 400 feet above ground level band of airspace that drone users can also um, utilise. Our fixed wing aircraft they can fly down to 250 feet above the ground level however we've got three tactical areas, tactical training areas in the UK. So one in Northern Scotland, one in the northeast of England and one in Midwest Wales, where fixed wing flying can come down to 100 feet above the ground level. Helicopters routinely fly down to 100 feet AGL above ground level across the UK, but quite often they are authorised to go lower and even down to ground level. In terms of speeds, the helicopters probably anything up to 150 knots, our larger aircraft, 250 knots, and actually fast jet up to 400 knots, or in the region of 400 knots at 250 feet. We don't conduct low flying near airports or over towns and cities, and we have uh, avoids for medical establishments, um, industrial uh, establishments, that type of thing. Next up with Squadron Leader Rollins, we're going to be talking about how to notify the RAF of your drone flight. Can you, should you, where do you do it, what number do you call, etc. that kind of information. Also, we're going to find out about what they do with that information to bring that on to the pilots. And actually, also, whether or not even completing something like Drone Assist is actually useful to them whatsoever. Let's find out. We've developed a poster that gives out the number for the low-flying ops flight. Yes. Uh, and if you wish to phone us and let us know about your your drone flight, you, you can do so. So calling that number, giving a uh, date, time and location of your drone flight. The staff then there will then put it onto our deconfliction tool. So we have a deconfliction tool that all air crew who are flying in the low-flying system have to check prior to okay. flight. So they will input their route, uh, waypoints, heights, altitudes, uh, timings, and then play that route. Uh, and the system will look at all the other routes that are in there and kind of highlight any potential conflictions. Uh, and then the pilot has prior awareness and is able to liaise with that um, other air user and, and uh, deconflict. So if we get drone flights put on there, then the pilot has awareness of, of that and can either amend their route or, or just pick their height up or just if, if it's in the vicinity, general vicinity, kind of keep 
uh, keep vigilant and on the lookout. I did call that number last year because we were going to be mentioning it in one of our videos and um, I, I kind of wanted to check it wasn't just a number that's kind of okay we're, we're ticking a box here you know um, we have to have a drone a number for drone pilots to call here's the box you know does it go, even go to an answer phone does anybody yet answer it and as I said in that video last year um, I was greeted by um, you know because again I called and said before I put this in my video and people start calling this number do you actually want phone calls um, and actually yes actually they do want to know so this is a genuine genuine telephone number um, with operators, you know, uh, experienced people ready to take your call. They know the information that they need from you and that information will be acted on, um, which we don't often see in a lot of, I, th I think there's a little bit of um, degradation in terms of um, willingness to participate sometimes because mm -hmm. we see some things where some campaigns that are run that aren't followed up on and that type of thing. But actually, this one really is. Mm, absolutely. I will just add on that. It's very much um, don't expect information back due to sensitivity. Yes. Um, the <laughs> Security. Don't expect to be told. Oh, actually, you've got you know two techs and aircraft flying there at this time. So um, please don't fly. It won't be. It'd be one way. Damn. From I thought you I thought it'd be a really good way for a tornado <laughs> spotting. Is that for flights specifically in in and around those training areas, or you know, do, would you want a phone call from someone that's flying just outside of Birmingham, for instance, etc.? Well, I'd I'd say I, I think there are some certain factors that would increase the likelihood and or severity of a mid-air collision with a, with a drone. So the first one, um, the mass of the drone. Clearly, the heavier the drone you're operating, the greater potential there is to cause catastrophic damage to an aircraft should, should the worst come to, the, come to the worst. Flying in valley areas, so the nature of the topography means that your drone and a, a, an aircraft are, are kind of in a more confined area sort of two hills either side rather than a vast sort of open uh, expanse rather so it just increases the likelihood of, of your drone and, and military aircraft kind of being in the same place at the same time also with valley flying if the pilot is lucky enough to spot the drone it limits their options for taking uh, avoiding action really uh, and also with valleys especially if you've got a meandering valley the indications that an aircraft is coming so hearing it uh, and seeing it you're not going to get as uh, as early warning for it uh, uh, from both of those maybe persistent drone flight in one particular area just the laws of probability if you're up in the air longer um, the more chance there is for you, for you to encounter something or something come flying by near um, military airfields, notwithstanding the FRZ, the flight restriction zone, should do its job. But even if you're just outside, uh, outside the area, you know, this is a place where flights start and end. So clearly you are just going to get lots of aircraft kind of coming in from different di directions. I'd also say that if you know of a military or sorry, well-known military low-flying hotspots like, for example, the M6 Pass in Cumbria and the McKinleth Loop, the Mac Loop in Wales. I would strongly discourage drone operators to fly in those areas. Whilst the regulators regulations don't pre prevent it, um, actually, I've already talked about those speeds, like fast jets doing 400 mm. knots. It's a really demanding environment, low-level flying training. Uh, they're not going to see your drone and uh, and if the valley areas again uh, it limits the options for probably you to take as a drone operator and, and the pilot to take it should they should they spot them so i would strongly discourage drone drone operators from flying in those areas hopefully the information that i'm giving here now will just um, encourage that pre-flight thinking and that pre-flight questioning of okay so if i fly my drone here what potential hazard or what hazard are, am i presenting you know what are the potential consequences and what can i do that just makes that safer so that might be phoning phoning that number it might be using um uh, the, those apps and publishing your your drone flight on those apps it might be having um, i'm aware of websites that will show you live tracks of aircraft through adsb and, and transponder uh, so it might be worth having that up as well and just kind of monitoring the local airspace and just seeing if something's coming in just so you know what mm. should I, should i continue my fl drone flight or not i'd also say that if you are flying and you hear or see an aircraft approaching and now that's military or civilian please take measures to uh, move your drone out of the way and ultimately land it I think is the safest safest thing as a military we fly differently to civilian aircraft and actually you know we'll be contouring following the ground so you're likely to hear and see as later than maybe an aircraft at a higher altitude just doing straight and le uh, straight and level and equally we're going to be 
um, more difficult to predict our flight path. So you may see and hear us and think, oh, actually, we're full, we're out the way. It doesn't really matter. But then actually, the military aircraft quite it's quickly very good point. takes a, yeah, takes a, a different mm. flight path or different uh, path, and uh, and you come into confliction. If you are flying your drone and you have a close encounter that you think actually I think this the safety of one or both or but sorry the safety of both of our aircraft was compromised there by the proximity uh, and you think maybe it was an airprox I really encourage you to report an airprox you can do that by going on the UK airprox board uh, website they have a nice button that says report uh, an airprox uh, it'll take you through some questions details of your flight narrative your details as well it's geared for piloted aircraft but fill it in as much as you can one of the airprox board inspectors will be in touch with you after to confirm a few details then about five or six months later the uk airprox board will sit um, so they meet every month and discuss about 20 um, airproxes they will sit discuss that airprox record the contributory factors give it a risk um, category make any safety recommendations if that's appropriate and then you will get the feedback loop of, of um the report and see see what they've said about it so in summary essentially call the free phone number register your flight and have a bit of confidence about the flight that you're going to be taking you can also take the step of actually notifying your flight on drone assist as we've heard in the interview that will actually be picked up by crews not on an official basis yet but that's a step forward but also look at the topography of where you're flying in terms of whether or not that's going to have an impact and whether or not you know for instance if you're in the middle of a town centre, etc., you probably don't need to make the phone call. In the countryside, in a valley, it's probably worth picking up the phone and notifying them just in case. Remember, they want your phone call. This isn't something which they're setting up and then they don't staff, etc. I've used the line myself several times. They're very welcoming. They want the information. So get calling. <laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure. And I just, um, I'd like to say, you know, the military, we're not trying to prevent you flying your drone. Uh, we absolutely understand the appeal of drones. We we operate drones ourselves. I'm sure that will only increase in the future. I, I just want to put that, increase that awareness and understanding that your drone flight has a potential impact uh, on our on our military flow, uh, low flying. Uh, and also our, our low flying has a potential impact on, on drone flying. Okay, so that's it for today. Hopefully you know a little bit more about how to handle yourself around low flying aircraft and your drone and how to notify the RAF of your drone flight, etc. Keep an eye on Geeks Farner. There's gonna be more content of this type coming up. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And if you're one of my awesome regulars, keep this smile on my face, which obviously hanging out, hanging out with aircraft always makes me smile, but keep that smile on my face by hitting the like button. Thanks everyone, Sean out.